Welcome back to part five. Or well, welcome if it's your first time. You might want to have a look at the previous ones just to understand what I'm trying to do here. What we're going to do today is, is we're going to figure out um, if our wiring that goes from the coolant temp sensor to the ECU, which is this fella here, if it's okay, or do we have a bad ECU, which odds are that is the case. But to make sure, we're going to test it. Now, I've been waiting on some schematics. Sadly, the schematics don't um, tell us um, which pin is what. So we have to do it the old fashioned way, get a multimeter and test each wire individually. Now, we have two plugs here. I believe that the sensor is talking on the bottom plug. This one is talking to the modules that are throughout the car, like body control, immobilizer, etc. And I believe this one is talking to all the sensors um, around the engine. So I'm going to disconnect the battery, unplug this one, unplug the coolant temp sensor, plug our multimeter, and look for continuity. Let's do it. to have to probe every one of them until we find where our coolant temp sensor wires are. Now, what we're looking for is uh, one of these little beeping sounds. I don't know if you can hear it. So we're looking for continuity. Now, how we're going to find it is We've got a, a multimeter and uh, we've attached one side of it to our plug, to our, sorry, to our coolant temp sensor is one side. And this side is going to be on a little probe. And the way we've got to do it is we just got to touch every single Pin until we find the one that we need. I'm going to have to do this twice because we're looking for two wires, not just one. Okay, our probe is too thick and it can't go in there. Okay, I had to improvise as my probes are just too thick to go in there. So we made a homemade one, which should do the trick uh, because that can actually go in the hole now. And uh, hopefully we find him. There it is. Well, that's bad news. Because that's telling us that our ECU is not getting the signal. Okay, that's only one. We've got to find the other one. Now, let's mark this one so that we know who he is, where he is. 
and um, look for the other one. Okay, now, this is our plug that we need. It must be around here somewhere. So, we're going to count it, and where it beeps, we're going to know that it's that one. So, let's do that. So the second row starts from 17. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now we're gonna go and swap the wires on the sensor. Okay. Well, that's more bad news. That's telling us that um, our ECU is not um, is not sending and receiving the signal. Unfortunately, I will identify that number two. So that's um that row starts from thirty three and it comes this way. So thirty three, thirty four, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine. Okay. We know that these plugs have been unplugged heaps of times. And um there is a possibility that uh, the plug is now faulty, but that's really hard to check for. So I'm going to try and pull this plug apart just to see if we can have a look at the pins themselves. I don't know if you can hear me from this plane flying above, but um, I just need to cover all bases because getting another ECU is going to be near impossible at least getting a good one and uh, you can't get new ones anymore and uh, there's not really that many people that repair them or if you know of somebody that repairs them please let me know okay let's do that
guy. Here's our little pug. Second row, starting from here, 17, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, it's that one, looks pretty good, it's no different than any other one, mm. to my bad luck, hey? Okay, so that's that one. The second one is number 39, which is in this row, starting from 33 in the third row. So it's 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Same as him, it looks pretty good. I can't really fault it, I'd like to, but I can't. So, I think that our ECU is cactus. <laughs> Lining it up is a, a little bit difficult. Okay, I'm gonna have to take this cover off completely in order to do this properly. Sure, they're pretty even. And then just by pressing like this, they should just lock in. That's two. That's three. Oh, lucky last number four. Okay, now this little locking tab should go in. If they're all aligned, the pin should lock in. If they're not, then the pin. Oh, yeah, they're all in. Good as. Yep. That's that. Okay, I'm going to put this one back and then we're going to get a cable tie and tie it off how it was. Well, I think we're going to have to cut this tape back. Oh. Over. Might sleep over. Oh. Okay. 
A little gasket back in. Let's grab the terminal, the coil. And plug in our coolant temp sensor. All right, let's go start it. See if it made any difference. Uh, we're not taking any bets on today's uh, exercise. Okay, let's start it. Okay, we didn't fix that issue. Most definitely. Furthermore, I have, um, I keep rescanning this car uh, all the time just to see if there's any movement. Um, the issue we have is uh, we have five codes coolant temp sensor being one, map sensor being two, camshaft position sensor on bank one. They're all circuit high and also camshaft position sensor bank two and the lucky last oil pressure switch that's the only one that um, i think is irrelevant to this the oil pressure switch i think is uh picking up uh irregularities because the car doesn't get started all the time and uh, when it does start it usually needs to crank a lot rah 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 so i think that one we don't need to worry about um, it's the other four that are kind of on the same wiring harness and uh, i have a funny feeling they have something in common please if anybody knows uh, or if anybody's had this problem and sorted it please let me know uh, that'll be all for part five. I hope to see you in part six. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.